Well, hello there, community. This is Dev Central Connects. I am Jason Rahm, and today I have with me Aubrey straight out of the gate. Aubrey, how you doing? Good. How you doing? Oh, how you doing, Jason? Fan- I'm fantastic. I'm, I'm I'm living the dream, right? I'm, I'm a little tired, you know. I, as as mentioned to our, our guest who's going to join us here a little bit, I, I wish I was a coffee drinker. Um, I don't drink coffee, um, but today feels like uh, I really should be a coffee drinker. So, um, you know, it is what it is. But uh, but I'm happy to be here. And uh, we got a good show today. We're, we're going to start with uh, a little discussion on my F5 and then move into my Security Plus journey. But before we get to that, we, we got a couple calls to action. The first one uh, that we have is uh, Cybersecurity Awareness Month. That is this month of October. We're, we're already more than halfway through. It's crazy. Um, but we have a lot of content on Dev Central um, at uh, community.f5.com. So make sure you go over there, join us, and uh, we've got... Uh, a lot of content around uh, security in general for this month. Of course, we have a lot of content that's not security because we uh, speak to uh, audiences of, of a lot of different genres uh, within the uh, within the F5 realm. Uh, so make sure you join us over there. Check that out. And Aubrey, you have something uh, coming up tomorrow, in fact, uh, like one of our one-off shows. What do you got going on? I certainly do, actually. I think we have something going on tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, you're going to be. What is we? Uh, but you know, I don't want to steal your show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're uh, if you're hanging around doing nothing tomorrow and you're into F5, you probably want to tune into uh, Dev Central Connect's pop up show. We've got a QSN pop up show tomorrow. Where, if you're unfamiliar with QSN, it is our quarterly security notifications. Uh, once a quarter, we release all of the. Uh, potential security issues or vulnerabilities with all of our product sets all at one time. The idea is this gives you uh, the chance to be able to put in place any sort of, um, uh, you know, change moratoriums or make sure that your tickets in um, so that you can make changes to production when the time comes. And Jason, Jason and I will be around tomorrow morning. 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern time if you're here in the U.S., um, or in, I guess I should say the Americas, right? Cause you know, we also have South American folks tuning in. Um, so if you're around, give us a listen. We're going to go through all the vulnerabilities with our pal, Aaron Brailsford from F5 security incident response team. Yes. And that'll be a good show. Aaron's always a, a fantastic guest to join. And our final, uh, discussion here before we get into the meat of the show is Hacktoberfest. If you're not familiar with that, that's if you have any kind of development interest, it's uh, your opportunity uh, to get involved in some open source work in the month of October. So um, go to hacktoberfest.com, see where you can plug in. And uh, I think if you even contribute to like four different open source projects within the, you know, before the end of the month, they'll, they'll send you a cool t-shirt. So uh, get out there and, and uh, they have a lot of beginner um a lot of beginner projects so that if you're you know not sure how you might contribute they have a list and say hey come here we'll help you we'll help you get started and and all that stuff so uh that is what is uh coming up actually i lied we have one more and that is aubrey uh a little project you've been working on right (laughs) that's right i although i feel bad i'm kind of late with it um have been forced (laughs) been forced to kind of delay our release of podcasts uh, a little bit. I've had a uh, a bit of an equipment failure in my sound studio, but that should be uh, rectified now, and we should be able to. You will be seeing two podcasts out of the gate. Um, there will be Dev Central Connects, which we already have a, a, a library uh, just waiting, and also this month in security, which is our partnership with F5 Labs and F5 Security Incident Response Team. So we will be seeing that. Uh, I would imagine later this week. Uh, or next week, uh, the first ones will drop, and and we'll give you more information on Dev Central Connects for that. Well, and, and I have a little uh, little project I'm working on that that will be good for uh, the. It'll be on the shorter side, you know, one to three minute kind of clips for uh, for the podcast as well. So that that'll be a good show. Anyway, we are up to our very first part of the meat of the show, and that is a little my F5 video, and then we'll introduce our guest. So enjoy. Welcome everyone, I'm Laurel Portner, a Senior Director in F5 Support. I'm delighted to announce that Maya 5 will be your new support site in the coming weeks. 
Maya 5 is your portal to our newly retooled world-class support organization. You can expect the same exceptional service you have always received from us, plus new personalized digital features that will make it easier for you to get the most from your F5 technologies. Using Maya 5, you can quickly accomplish many of your support needs yourself on your schedule. For example, you can create, view, and manage your own support cases, add, remove, and manage your support account users, download subscriptions, track details and usage of your subscriptions, and find answers based on your previous searches and your profile. Should you need further assistance, you can quickly connect with a support specialist who has access to details about your visit to Maya5 and your account. These aren't your only options, however. Maya5 also offers live chat. You can use the chat window at any time to get basic help with issues like licensing, and the site navigation, opening a support case for complex issues. These features are just the beginning. Maya 5 will continue to add new capabilities that further improve your support experience. In the coming months, you can expect to see all software downloads and trials on Maya 5, all knowledge articles and resources consolidated on Maya 5, and a self-service AI-powered knowledge base that helps you troubleshoot problems quickly. If you're not on Maya 5, the wait is nearly over. Look for an email notification from F5 Support. We can't wait to see you on Maya 5. Okay, well, I thought that was just going to transition for me, but it did not. It just it just sat there, so that's okay. It's like uh, I like the little felt the little Appalachia in the the music there. Uh, felt like man, I, I should be sitting in a on a cabin porch in my rocker, watching the sun come up or something. So that was really nice. But um, and and Laurel kind of stole my thunder there because she introduced herself uh, in in that video. Uh, but she's been at this game for a long time, twenty plus years of community uh, customer experience and support portal launches. And so, you know, without further ado, let, let's bring Laurel on. Hey, Jason. Laurel, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. How, how are you? <laughs> great to be we here. We are doing well. Uh, nice video. I, I, I love to see, uh, you know, us moving forward and things. And, you know, we've had some disparate portals. You know, we have like Ask which I think Ask has been around since I became a customer in 2002. I think it was it has quite a history, yes. Yeah, Ask <laughs> has been around a long time. And, yeah. you know, yeah. we've had, of course, the support portal as well. Um, and then we had support.f5.com, which wasn't really support. It was Ask. And so mm -hmm. that's you know, right. a, a lot of little moving parts there. But now that's all merging, right, into my F5. So wh why why the move? Why, why my, I, my, sorry, why my F5? <laughs> Right. Well, it's it's new. It's modern. It gives us uh, more capabilities to to serve our customers, you and um, and save you time, make it easier for you to do business with us and, and gives lots of options, uh, which is which is what we've we've heard lots of feedback of. We need more ways to connect with F5. So this allows us to do that. OK, and like for you in the in the the process that you've been through what's been the the like maybe the hardest thing uh to to bring together yeah so i would say that uh there's just there's a lot of use cases that we are we've heard through various channels of feedback and so we wanted to bring it all into kind of a central hub for for everyone um so that's a little tricky because Everyone wants um, a piece of the homepage and then there's there's not as much real estate. So we still want feedback. Um, it's it's going to be a, an iterating thing that uh, as as we roll out new things, we want to hear from you and just, you know, what what uh, what makes the most sense, what, what you use the most. And obviously we'll be 
using some of our analytics to do that too. Yeah. What is the biggest change maybe from the old site to uh, the new site that, that will help uh, customers the most? Sure. Um, yeah. So the, the biggest change I would say is that, that I've heard from customers that they are really excited about is that they, they can see um, if you are an admin user, you can see all the cases uh, for your account. And so you've got a lot more flexibility and control as a customer uh, to, to what you can see, what cases are out there and who um, other admins are for, for your account. So. Okay. So that's yeah, that's key. actually really good. Cause I, I remember I was at, um, I owned most of the cases at when, when I was the last customer, not all of them. And so, you know, I didn't have that visibility and we ended up like managing everything in a big spreadsheet that we all got together and, and moved around. Yes. So, so that one will be, that one will be pretty important. Yep. We've um, heard that too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. When you talk about central hub, is that for just the, the aspects of the support organization or is it the central hub really that people can really land on my F5 and, and their entire F5 experience can that's can right be it, from there? The latter. It's it's you can get everything um, from there. So if you need to go to the community site, if you need to go to downloads, if you um, you can find everything from my F5, and we're going to be continue uh, to to bring more things there that people need. So, um, for example, ask F5 is already there. It's, you can search for answers and, and get, uh, get those answers as quickly, just like you can on support.f5.com. So, um, and then we will be, you can look at your subscriptions. You can do trials if you want, if you're interested in a new, uh, a new product, uh, there's trials there as well. Oh, great. Yeah. The, the trials will be fantastic. Um, so I, a little birdie told me that, that, you know, from an ask perspective, that, that actually isn't just going to be launched from there. It's actually going to be merged there. Is that, is that That's accurate? Right. That's right. We are merging ask F5 and my F5. Um, it will be by early 2023. I don't want to give a, an exact date cause you know how these things go, but, uh, but we're starting to, to do that now and you won't see any interruption in service. Uh, you will be able to just like you can uh, right now, either on my F5 or on support.f5.com and also in other places like f5.com um, and community, you can search for Ask F5 knowledge base articles. And uh, so that will continue. And uh, we're just going to put it all into a, a new place with, again, new capabilities, new new ways. And, and there's a few things. Um, if you don't mind me giving you a sneak peek in, into what's Please. coming, we're, we're working on some new features like um, getting proactive alerts on content, uh, expanding your profiles so that you can get a, a more personalized experience based on maybe your past history or past cases, uh, products that you own, those kinds of things. So you're not getting the entire knowledge base. You want to get just what's important to you. Yeah, and I think I heard you mention maybe I'm wrong about this, but the ability to like save, uh, recall saved searches, so you don't have to like go back through that same like mental yep. model of trying to find what it was you're looking for. <laughs> right. What was it? What was it that I that I was looking for? And then also, if um, our support engineers are using the exact same knowledge base, and so they are constantly using it and and tagging it with cases, uh, so so you may find that oh, this was a, an article that a support engineer told me about. And where was that? Oh, it's tied to that case. So that's coming too. Oh, cool. Yeah, almost, I almost kind of see that, you know, if you look at like, um, and this is a big tangent, but like the MITRE attack framework and how you can kind of move through that. It's like mm -hmm. doing kind of the same thing with the, the knowledge base because there's so much out there. But being yeah. able to tie pieces together, it's like, oh, I care about this, but that particular thing might link to these four other things. And and sure. uh, being able to build that stuff out that way. So, sure. yeah, I'm excited yeah. about where the, the, the uh, platform is going to go. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Do you have any, any final thoughts uh, before, we, uh, before we say goodbye? Um, just, again, look for an email communication. If you aren't already on My F5, we will let you know when it's your turn because we are currently migrating all of our customers over to the, the new platform. And we just can't wait to see you there. So thanks so much for having me. 
Fantastic. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, I am excited about where we're going. Have a great day. And again, you thanks too. for joining us. Thanks, Back guys. Bye-bye. Take care. All right. Well, now. So many, cha so many changes. <laughs> I know. It's crazy. And, but it's good. You know, I'm, I'm really excited about being able to have a central hub uh, for the thing because yeah, that is one of the, the feedback we get, you know, to, to be transparent. That's the feedback we get a lot. It's like, I really don't know where to go for stuff because, you know, I, I think I have to go here for Dev Central, but then it's really Ask, and then I go to Ask, and I think it's Dev Central, or it's the Sport Portal, or maybe it's Cloud Docs, or, or whatever. And so, um, you know, we're, we're listening. We're, we're hearing your feedback. Uh, continue to give us feedback because even as we move everything to my F5, you know, we, we, we learn along the way because what we think what you want and what you actually want are, are not always the same things. And so uh, it's a process and it's a, it's an iter iterative process. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm having a problem with the tongue today, getting the <laughs> words out, but, but yeah, it's a process. And so please, uh, you know, contact us, give us feedback. Uh, we can, you know, you can give us feedback here on the show and we can pass it along or you can actually just go out to my F5 and give feedback there. And so uh, really, really excited about where we're going there. So, uh, you know, Laurel and team have their hands full uh, for, for going forward here in this quarter. But, uh, you know, moving on, we have uh, something that uh, actually we're going to switch uh, seats, right? You're going you're gonna to host and you're going to ask me some things, right? Yes, I would definitely like to do that. So you, uh, you went through the, uh, the Security Plus certification recently, as I recall, correct, Jason? I, you know, I, I wouldn't say I'm through it yet. I'm still in the in the in the cauldron of of certification, and and really, I, I'm ready. I'm ready to take the test. But there's been some, you know, uh, I guess some some snags on the uh, signing up for the test part that that I got to work out still. Uh, and so that's uh, I'm ready though, and I feel confident in passing the test. Uh, one of the things, and you know, I'll put the uh, the goals. The first part of this is what I wanted to do was twofold. Uh, first of all, is we knew cybersecurity awareness was coming. Uh, cybersecurity awareness month was coming, and the idea I had is like, hey, you know, certification is one of those things that that people deal with in their career, and for some, it's they they just you know want to build out a portfolio of of expertise that they can put on their resume, and uh, and and open up doors for jobs and and all that kind of thing. I'm in a job. My job doesn't require it, and so that wasn't necessarily. An important aspect for me but it is for a lot of people and uh, and there's some people who are in a career and, and maybe they want to transition maybe they want to go from IT uh, specific like you know routing switching uh, development or whatever and they want to work their way into security but how do I do that and so getting started in security one of those ways is you can go build knowledge uh, if you don't have that in your day-to-day -day by pursuing a certification and and so there's lots of reasons why people might do that for me the the reason uh, first of all, was uh, just to go through the experience and share it with the community during Cybersecurity Awareness Month. But also, I've worked in practical security for, gosh, it's been, I, I didn't really touch security probably until uh, I worked for the government back, uh, you know, 2002 to 2004, uh, when I really started getting into firewalls and, and VPNs and, and that kind of stuff. And then I, I have done certainly a lot of security through um, you know, APM and, and ASM and AFM type stuff here for F5. But I would say all of my security knowledge is practical. It's, it's configuring equipment. Uh, but I don't really, I, I know, I've never been through formal training of, hey, this is why, this is why security is important. And I know like at a high level why, why security is important. But you get down into the brass tacks of here's how we actually implement security. Here is how we pursue security. And uh, here's how we mitigate and, and all that stuff, all the theory behind all, all what was lacking for me. And so uh, I wanted to go on that for that for that purpose. So more, it sounds like more ap application applied theory this time around. That's a that's a noble goal for sure. Um, I can imagine that that it's a pretty in depth process. Have there been any um, there been any surprises along the way for you? Anything that stood out? Yeah, actually, uh, the the biggest one is, I mean, uh, what we do here at F5, at least from the very beginning, is is SSL offloading, right? And uh, oh, yeah. and so SSL offloading, uh, DDoS, those two particular things, DOS and DDoS, SSL offloading, TLS now, uh, but but those 
kind of core technologies as, as far as what F5 has done from the very beginning, uh, the biggest surprise is I have a very practical ability to implement those things. But I realized as I went through the training and go, digging into some of the exercises, I don't really know it that well. And I think that's one of the reasons why cryptographers are already always like, please don't roll your own crypto. Because it, it's very, it's very in-depth. There's a lot to it. And it's very, very easy to get wrong. Um, and so, you know, there was a lot about PKI I thought I knew that I didn't. Uh, there was a lot even about, you know, certificates and, and uh, um, uh, crypto algorithms for, you know, stream ciphers and block ciphers and asymmetric versus symmetric and, and all that. And, you know, you use those words all the time and, and you set those things up. But do you really dig down into the details and fully understand it? For me, the answer was I, I really didn't understand it as well as I thought I did. And so, you know, there's two things at play. Uh, you know, you have a confidence about you that you think you know things, but then, you know, there's imposter syndrome. And it's like, well, um, you know, maybe I don't know anything at all. And the, the, the tension of those two things, I think, in your career, it's a healthy tension to have. Sure. Now, what, what about how the course was structured? Anything unique about that? Did you like it? I know these, like, certification courses are all different with how they're put together. How, how was this one? Yeah, so this particular one was a video course on O'Reilly Publishing. Uh, thankfully, F5 uh, supports us being, uh, you know, supports education. And so we have access to LinkedIn Learning. We have access to O'Reilly Publishing. So lots of books, lots of video courses. And so I'm very thankful to F5 for supporting our continuing education journeys. And this one is the uh, Security Plus um, uh, SY601 taught by Sari Green. And it's like 24 hours of, of video. It, it's, it's pretty in-depth. And they, she goes through all five modules uh, or all five domains that they test you on. And uh, she does a great job of breaking down the fact that, you know, the, uh, the test is 24% this, 25% this, 21% this, 14% this, 16% this. So you can really kind of do the mental calculus and say, okay, well, these are my strengths. And if I only need to get to like 70% on the test, you know, then then I can focus in these areas and not even worry about these other areas. For me, the learning journey was about building security theory and, uh, and, and knowledge that I didn't have. So it was less about passing the test and more about building the, the knowledge and the domains uh, where I was weak. So I actually focused more in the areas like governance and risk and, um, and operations and, and risk uh, 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 incident response. That I, I don't, I've never had a job like that, so I don't have those practical application skills. So I, I focused in those areas more, even though it wouldn't necessarily help me on the test. And okay. so, but but she organized the course well. The 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 individual videos within the lessons and sub lessons were great. The two things I loved about it most were there were uh, there were three second quizzes, uh, three second five question quizzes at the end of each lesson. That, you know, it's like, and I, I appreciate the three second thing because it's like, you know it or you don't at the end of that lesson. And if you don't know it, you can't come up with it in three seconds. Maybe you missed something. You got to go back and, and do it. Uh, so that was good. And then also there was a security in action after every lesson, which was like, okay, you just learned some things. Let's talk about how you use those in the real world. That part was super helpful. And so um, if there was anything negative about the course, it is slideware. And so if, if you don't learn well in slideware, this is not the course for you, um, but but it was I, helpful to me. I have that problem actually with with slideware. For me, it's just a it 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 doesn't kind of sink in. I would think a video would be nice, but the thing that typically helps me with that, uh, you know, overcoming slideware is a practice test. Um, yeah. So I'm I'm assuming there were practice tests, and if so, how 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 were those? Yeah. So the the practice test attached to the course actually links you to Pearson, uh, who gives the exams, uh, practice tests. And and that one was incredibly helpful. I'm going to have some other videos uh, supporting this in an article on DevCentral. That, that I'll, I'll talk about that more in depth. But that practice test was incredible. And highly recommend signing up for the course so that you get that level of practice test. I purchased um, a Udemy uh, practice test uh, bank, which is like five, five practice tests. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's not helpful, uh, but it wasn't helpful for me uh, for a couple reasons. One, uh, it's not necessarily directly in line with, with the, the way the questions are asked on, on the, the official exam. And, and so, you know, a little concerned about that. Uh, but then some of the content was just flat wrong. 
in the answers that they gave. And so at the beginning, I didn't know it was wrong because I'm just learning the material. So, you know, it builds almost a test anxiety. Um, and I, I don't really get test anxiety taking a test, but if you're using bad questions and then you don't really have a right answer or the answer is less right than I think it should be, uh, given the material I'm learning, it, it just builds, uh, you know, dis, you know, distrust in yourself and your ability to go through stuff. So um, I, I wasn't a fan of that material. One other thing about the, the practice exams, even in the course, is that there's a component to the real exam that I, maybe I do have a little bit of anxiety about, and that is the, um, the performance-based questions where they actually give you like maybe a router and a switch and a firewall, and you actually have to go in and look at routing tables and, and uh, access lists and, and fix them to, to make sure everything works. And, uh, of course, that's where my practical side should shine, right? Yeah. But, but, you know, going into a test and having to do it on a timed way and it's not just pick an answer and go, you know, that, that adds to the flavor. And, of course, F5 exams are like that. You have the performance-based questions where you have to kind of go in there and figure things out and then answer. Uh, but there, there hasn't been a lot of practice available to that. Um, there are a couple on CompTIA that, that, you know, you can link to and sign up for and, and, uh, and, and you can get to them. Uh, but, uh, you know, just lack of practice leading into the full exam, just have a little anxiety there. But, but that would be, um, you know, my, my feedback on the practice exam. Well, right on. It's something that maybe I'll, maybe I'll tackle someday, but <laughs> it's, uh, it, it's daunting for me right now. I, I, I don't know. Certifications are rough. Yeah. And we have a comment here from, uh, of Arun that's a good certification. He's reading the study guide uh, by Daryl Gibson right now. So I think that one is available also on, on O'Reilly. So uh, because I haven't signed up for the test yet, I, I'm uh, keeping the knowledge in my head and, and working through some weaknesses still. And, and I, I do, I think I did see that study guide out there. So I may check that out. Thanks for that. All right. Well, that is, that's my Security Plus journey. It's not complete yet, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, I'll report back when I take the test, pass or fail. And, uh, and, and I, I guess I will say about the practice exams, one thing I didn't cover, the very first one I took before I even started the, the, the journey through the, the class, I got, I think it was a 54 on, on the thing. And that was the Udemy test. So 54 out of, uh, I guess, 100. And uh, it was 100 questions in the practice exam. I got 54 of them right. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, so I had a ways to go to get to the 70% threshold, and that's something a little bit different because the, the actual full exam, it's like your score is 150 to 900, and a 700 or a 750 is passing somewhere in there. I think a 700 is passing. And so, you know, you have to exceed the 700 between a 150 and a 900. So whatever that algorithm is to shake that out that way. And so that, that was a little different. But, uh, uh, but yeah, I, I failed uh, fantastically um, before I started the material. Um, I am at a passing threshold uh, now. I've taken uh, two of the practice exams through the official course, and, and I've passed both of them. And so I, I feel pretty confident going into the test and taking it. Just got to shake out some administrative stuff on my side to make that happen. Uh, but we have some news, right, Audrey? Aubrey? Uh, wow, why did I call you Audrey? Aubrey? <laughs> yes, I, I, I do believe we do have some news. Um, and that, that's nice that we do have some, some time for the news still. Where did my, uh, where did my news go? I think it I think left it dropped, somehow. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right. Let me share this for a second. Okay. So <clears throat> first kicking off the news, this is an interesting one. Um, really we've got, uh, an, an interesting root kit that has been spotted out there in the wild. Um, now this, I picked up this article on Security Week and did a little bit of, uh, of digging. It looks like the usual suspects, you know, Kaspersky and whatnot are all looking into, uh, into this, uh, this particular threat right now. But if you're wondering what a UEFI root kit is or what that does, um, basically this thing uses Windows as a front door to get into your computer and then it buries yourself. It buries itself in your hardware. So um, at this point, this threat looks to be uh, very much Windows focused. Uh, but the idea here is, even if you flatten and rebuild your computer, uh, this is one of those things that will dig right into, you know, elements of of your hardware. This one being, uh, I guess, what you would call the firmware, right? Where UEFI. 
um, it, it's not going anywhere. And every time your computer boots up, it's going to be ready to hit your operating system as soon as it starts. Uh, whether or not you're infected or have a brand new operating system installation. Uh, so this one is good to be aware of. Uh, we don't truly know how this thing is is propagating. The suspicion seems to be it is all the, the usual suspected ways, clickable links in social and email, um, or, or, you know, maybe Trojan type stuff, just emailing, uh, you know, any sort of binary out there. But uh, it, it is one to be aware of and definitely one to just kind of keep in the back of your mind uh, in case you're seeing something that is coming up on boot with your Windows machines in your environment. So that was uh, that was what I had for the news. Well, now, it's pretty it's, it's pretty terrifying, right? Because, you know, as I, I've just gone through Security Plus stuff about, the, you know, the, all, the, all the, the protections you put in place for, for boot time, this seems like it bypasses all of them. And so, yeah, know, it, stay safe out there. <laughs> it, it does. That's something that Aaron, you know, Brailsford and I have been talking about in this month in security. Uh, Malcolm touched on it as well. I mean, it's it's um, su- supply chain security threats, which I guess, you know, this this is sort of considered that as it digs into hardware and, and could, in fact, be I mean, could be shipped with hardware. We don't we don't know. Um, but it, these are things that are, are on the rise. And um Definitely great to be aware of. Yeah. And uh, we, we got a little comment from Boo Lamb himself. Uh, oh. Exploit sounds like I'm in your base killing your dudes. <laughs> yes, it, it really does. And, and Boo is uh, on assignment. He's, he's way out of town internationally. I don't even know what time uh, it is for you. Uh, but th- thanks for joining us. That's is crazy. it early? Late? Same day? I don't even know. Early, late? So- something like that, yeah. <laughs> And so, yeah, so, so my article of the day is this, uh, this Google Plasma Globe Affair of 2012. It's like, well, why is that in the news? And, and it's really uh, because uh, Google has started these, these uh, episodes uh, on, on YouTube, uh, Hacking Google, and this, this first one is uh, really just about the, the concept of physical security, right? Uh, you get this cool thing, and you, you know these things with uh, – uh, you know, the, the, the swag you get at conferences and, you know, everybody hands you like USB drives. Oh, cool. I get this like new 256 gig, you know, thumb drive and you stick it in and your computer's wiped and blows up and, and all this stuff. So, you know, back, uh, back in, in 2012, it was like everybody was giving away fans and, and whatever at conferences. And this one was particular, uh, internal to Google. They, they built like five of these and they were just trying to do internal see see who would, fall for this and plug it in, but it was a, a keyboard, um, effectively a keyboard that would then just uh, put in a malicious payload into the computer when you plugged it in. And uh, so you can read about it, watch the episode. Um, this uh, this article is from one of the persons who was involved in, in building that and assembling it. So it's a fascinating little read of the problems that they had to solve in order to be able to, you know, one, be recognized as a keyboard, so understanding the, the you know, the USB protocol and, and how the OS systems that they attach to, because like uh, Google had um, uh, Mac, Linux, and Windows as approved systems. And so, you know, they don't know what which one is going to be plugged in, so they have to solve those problems. So it, it goes through the, the list of all the problems they had to solve to make it work and work well. Uh, and then I think they got uh, two or three people to, to actually plug this thing in. And, and so, yeah, so they're, they're red teaming their own their own company. And so, you know, a lot of companies do that with uh, phishing and all that. But, you know, is physical security one of those things that, that you red team for in your own organization? So that's a uh, support. I know where I worked in a military environment and um, and had a, a secure access to, to you know, uh, secret and top secret vaults and, and all that. And, uh, you know, the um, tailgating is a really, really big thing when you have access to things. So uh, when I moved from the military world into the private sector, you know, I get all these crazy looks when I shut the doors behind me and don't let people come through. And they're like, dude, what, what's up? And it's like, sorry. And it's like, I don't know that you have authorization to be here, so you're not tailgating behind me. Yeah. And uh, so, but, it, you know, physical security is one of those real things that people just, you know, because you want to be friendly, social engineers take advantage of that. Absolutely. It reminds me of, a, of an interesting technique uh, that I saw one of the uh, one of the next gen firewall companies out there a uh, long time ago. This was probably like seven, eight years ago at a at a trade show. 
they were handing out USB keys with their logo on it, just as kind of a, you know, here's a, here's a giveaway. And when you put that in your machine, it popped up all these windows to get your attention and said, you know, you know, the, the windows were like, you've been owned, you've been owned, you've been owned. And then they disappear. And instead it replaces with, uh, here's why physical security is important. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. We had a, another comment back here. Uh, from Zorin, uh, certified uh, certified with Security Plus. Well done. Congratulations. Um, and then one note, the minimum passing score, 83, not 70. Yeah, so there's another thing where, you know, the practice test on Udemy are giving you a uh, false thing. I don't know where, yeah, maybe it is 83, but where it falls between their 150 and 900 score. It kills me that, uh, you know, the test companies do that. It's like, it, just give me a, you know, it's like, make it like I learned in elementary and, and, and high school and college. Like, it's just a passing score. It's not. Like, well, you have to have this, like, crazy little uh, scale in which to uh, assess your stuff. Uh, but thanks for that, uh, Zorn. We did have a comment from Muhammad as well, and I uh, apologize for not seeing that earlier uh, when uh, Laurel was still with us. But I'll um, shoot me an email. It's uh, j.rom at f5.com, and I'll get an answer from Laurel to you, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get back to you. Well, I, I think that brings us to the end, uh, Aubrey. Good show. Thanks for joining me today on this and and uh kind of sharing the host chair because it's kind of a little bit uh back and forth there thanks for having me and i guess uh i'll probably see you tomorrow again if you didn't uh if you guys didn't uh catch it at the beginning quarterly security notification tomorrow morning 8 a.m pacific time or uh, 11 a.m eastern time in the americas yep all right Enjoy, community. We'll see you again here tomorrow morning, but then also same bat time, same bat channel next Tuesday at 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Take care, everyone. Well, thanks for checking out that video. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. While you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. You might want to check out one of these videos over here. And if you haven't already, go check out community.f5.com. This is where all the Dev Central Connects hosts hang out, as well as the rest of the community. It's free to sign up, and we'll see you there.